So we're talking about for vitamin C to work as chemotherapy, you need to use between 30 and 50 grams of vitamin C. And then we precondition the patient with ozone because ozone has proven to increase the amount of oxygen within the tumor tissue. And in order to produce oxidation, you need, you need oxygen. So then the combination of those two will produce peroxide, actually, within the tumor. And, and peroxide is the actual killing agent. So vi vitamin C is actually just a pro-drug. Mm -hmm. and, and all of this um, uh, knowledge was published by the NIH and the NCI, the National Institutes of Health in America yeah. and the National Cancer Institute. So, based on those publications, we developed our protocol for vitamin C. Okay. Latrol has been known for a long, long time that it's a mild, natural anti-tumor agent mm -hmm. that works by delivering minute, amount, minute amounts of cyanide. And um, the cyanide, normally in the normal cell, is converted into cyanocobalamin, which is B12. Right. In other words, without cyanide, we would die. Yeah. And that's why you will find cyanide in about 1,200 different type of foods that we normally consume. Mm -hmm. uh, so the malignant cell does not have the, the enzymatic environment to convert it. So it actually releases the cyanide and, and kills uh, selectively the malignant cell. Okay. And what, and what other kinds of alternative unorthodox treatments would you suggest at that stage? Would you suggest things like, I know yoga is being talked about today, would there be things like that? Uh, that yes, do? exercise is very important. Yeah. Um, but the other one is, is nutrients, because nutrients now are known to be what is called signaling, signaling transduction agents. Okay. What is that? Um, have you heard of Avastin, for instance? Avastin is no. one of the new monoclonal antigens. And they target specifically a signaling route of, of malignant cells to produce a certain protein that is absolutely necessary for the tumor to grow. So if you block that protein, the tumor is going to suffer. Now, Avastin, I don't know what the cost uh, here in England is, but in, in the U.S. is about $10,000 a month. Very expensive. Curcumin food does exactly the same thing. And that's an inexpensive alternative, then? Yes. Yeah. And, and, and you will find at least 100 publications on curcumin, and it's anti-tumor activity. And so there, there's, you know, at least 20 or 30 different type of nutrients that will do the signaling transduction very similar or the same as monoclonal antigens. So we use a lot of that on our patients. And you build those into diet plans? Or yes. That it's do? part of their, not only their diet, but taking those supplements in high dosages okay. in order to, to obtain the same results as the monoclonal antigens. So that's a big part of the, of the therapy and, and I believe also a big part of the success. Yeah. We're not just directly attacking the tumor with oxidative agents mm -hmm. like chemo or radiation or vitamin C. Yeah. I say vitamin. That's the way they um, <laughs> so right. Sorry about I that. I don't mind. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, uh, so we also work on the, on, on the signaling transduction entity of, of cancer, which is, you know, the, nowadays the future. The problem is, as I tell you, the monoclonal antigens are very high, and more and more we're finding um, genetic mutations that uh, are a big component of, of cancer. So a cancer of the breast may have 20 or 30 different genes that you need to attack. So imagine if you use 20 monoclonal antigens at $10,000 a month, it becomes completely Mm, unaffordable. Unaffordable. Impractical. And, and I gather that you, the, the time spent at the clinic is actually quite short. Mm. Two to three two, weeks? Two to three weeks. That's the initial part of the therapy. Then we require for the patients to come, to come uh, either in. every month or every three months or every four months, depending on how aggressive the tumor is, how yeah. advanced the problem is. Mm -hmm. uh, but yes, the, the, the patient is not just, you know, three weeks and that's it. And no, no, patients no. are cured. No, it's... 
the three weeks are the initiation process. Then everybody goes home with therapy. And diet plans. And diet plans, yeah. yes. Um, exercise, whatever a patient can do. There are some patients that cannot exercise. Yeah. Uh, there are some patients that cannot keep a diet. For instance, somebody that, that, that cannot swallow mm. has a tube to, to feed in the stomach, so you need special type of food. Yeah. So there's many differences for the patients, but yes, it's a long-term, it's a long-term commitment. And whilst they're there, they have presumably their, a, a large room in the clinic and stay uh, The overnight. patients have a very nice room, and the, and the room is more set up like the hotel rather than the hospital. Right, yeah. Um, so there's a hospital bed and a normal bed. Okay. We, we encourage the patients to come with a, with a companion, family member, right, spouse, yeah. friend. Uh, because to stay the, in the same room? To or? stay in the same room. Because it makes a big difference. Yeah. Support is, is terribly important. Um, somebody that, that, that cares for you in such a way that makes a sacrifice to spend that time with you adds a tremendous amount of value to your life. And what are the facilities like? Do you have big grounds? Well, uh, big is, is very subjective, but it, it's, it's a large enough uh, hospital. It's a hospital. Yeah. We have 62 rooms. Right. Uh, Every room is very ample because it, it houses uh, people, and then also for a long time, it's not easy to be, you know, in a place that it's very cramped for three weeks. So it is large. In in our hospital, I would say that it's a it's a a, a very well equipped uh, hospital, similar to a a it's a regional hospital in, in, here in England. So we have all the facilities that you need to take care of patients with, uh, you know, complicated uh, diseases such as cancer. Yeah. So we have cardiologists, we have nephrologists, we have radiologists, we have about 25 different uh, specialties to support taking care of cancer patients. And how do you work out the cost of what people need when they come in? How is that work? The, the cost is also very subjective because you know some people will need more than, but the the average a patient will spend with us for the first three weeks is around twenty thousand U.S. dollars, which is uh, not expensive in comparison to you know the cost here. The difference is that here you don't pay for it because you have uh, socialized medicine. Uh, in America, most people have uh, insurance. Mm. This, uh, the natural part of the therapy, most insurance companies will not pay. Yeah, yeah. Insurance companies will pay for anything that is conventional mm. at our hospital. Uh, from England, well, obviously they, they have to pay everything because your system does not pay outside of, yeah. of your country. Um, so then it is, since it's out of pocket, it seems like a lot of money. But it is, uh, in comparison to the true cost of uh, of oncology care, yeah. it is actually very, uh, very affordable. And do you have a lot of people coming from the UK as a result? We have, for instance, right now as I left, we have three patients from the UK. Yeah. Uh, um, we we have about 300 new patients per month. Um, I would say that about 15 or 20 of those patients are from from the UK. Most of them, some from Europe. Let's say. Yeah. Germans and other patients, mm. but most of the patients that we have from from this area are from the UK. Has that been increasing? Have you noticed that that's going yes. up? Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, more and more patients, uh, be, because of the good results in the patients that come back, so they refer other patients. So yes, that, that has been increasing. Yeah. To the point that there's some interest in uh, of uh, some of the people here that we would open an uh, oasis of hope here in England. Mm. So we would like to explore that possibility, depending on what your, you know, your country would be, would allow us to do. Yeah. Uh, uh, the do laws think? in Mexico, for instance, are quite different than in the States. Mm. So everything that we do in Mexico is approved by our government. And uh, uh, for instance, amygdalin is approved in the States, but it's not approved here right. or, in, or in America. The, the vitamin B17. Yeah. Um, so it will depend on, on what your government would allow us to do, yeah. whether we want to open up 
do you think the government reason. would have a the UK government would have a distrust towards a more alternative, less orthodox? Uh, generally, like most uh, most uh, uh, developed countries do have a distrust because most of the studies in alternatives have stopped at the at the uh, at the preclinical stages right. of of research. Very compelling, but because it is so expensive, I'm, I'm, I'm sure they're here as well, but in, in America, for instance, it's so expensive to prove your therapy is safe and effective. Uh, in order for you to prove, at least in the States, your, your drug to be safe and effective, the cost is around $800 million. Wow. So what do, what do companies do? Well, they, what is the government going to do for me? Well, they give you a patent, and then you prove it. Uh, since most of the things that we use are natural, they're, they're not going okay. to give us a patent, yet we have to spend the $800 million. And then everybody can do it, so nobody has been able to do that. In Mexico, for instance, amygdala in, in the 70s, it, the cost to prove to our government that it was safe and effective was about $350,000. So we got it approved, everybody does it in Mexico, they, nobody paid a cent, but it was something that was not going to break us. But $800 million is... And that's why the, it is very difficult for a government like yours to say, I'm asking everybody to do this, why shouldn't I ask, I ask you? Well, why, why don't you give me a patent? Well, because it's natural. We cannot give you... And so it's, it's a... It's, um, it's a problem that is not going to be easily resolved, unfortunately, yeah. Yeah. unless the, the rules of the game change. And that's going to take a while. Mm -hmm. And it's unfortunate for the patients, because there are many alternatives out there that are very scientifically based, that will never get to the clinical, that, that is using human, the studies in humans to prove that it's safe and effective, which, you know, logically they would be, safe, effective, we would have to determine. We have been able to prove to our government that amygdalin is safe and effective and that vitamin C in high dosages for cancer patients is safe and effective. There's a way to go over here. And that's why people have to go there yeah. and we can't do it here. Fascinating. How do you administer that amount of vitamin C? We administer to every patient 60 grams of vitamin C on a daily basis. IV? IV. Okay. And the liposomal? How, how no, 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 because that's oral. Yeah, but we can't do IV. It doesn't early. matter how much orally you get, you will never get to the levels for it to work as chemotherapy. And you don't think liposomal? No, it, because that no, you're, no, you're using course. it rather as, a, as an immune stimulant, as an antioxidant, but not as a, it doesn't work as cancer therapy. So it has to be IV. It has to be IV. Yeah. So expensive to get IV in the UK. How many tablets would you have to, I mean, uh, for some basic So imagine how many the normal dose that you take orally for, for as a supplement yeah, yeah. is 200 grams. I mean, 200 milligrams. Right. A mega dosage orally that you can take is about 10 grams. And most people at 10 grams will develop diarrhea. It's impossible to go higher. Yeah. It's not going to kill you, but it's just impossible to go higher. Mm. The minimal dose that you need in order to work for it to work as, as an anti-tumor agent is 30 grams. So the only way to do it is IV. Yeah, yeah. And that just doesn't affect, have the same effect as it, the yeah. negative effects on the body. Yeah, no, no, you have no diarrhea. It's very, very well tolerated. Up to 100 grams we've done very well tolerated.